the goal here is to get you guys proficient on the on the aircraft and feel comfortable. So I wasn't able to be here last week. I apologize. You know, other work commitments were in the way. But uh, how was? I, I heard some. I sent an email. Some of you guys got back to me. I appreciate that. Um, but I'm just curious. Like for those of you that were out here flying, did you guys? Feel like it was constructive, like you were learning something, or was it uh, was it something that was kind of you know just more difficult than you anticipated, or how did that unfold for you guys? Go ahead. Me, it was much more difficult. Uh huh. It was. I was or wasn't. It was. Was okay. And I did improve though, like with Chase's help. Yeah. Like I slowly was improving, but I still am nowhere near. Me. And you flew just because the we have little tiny one, micro quad. But was it the orange, the blade one, or not? What was the? Which yeah, one? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, little. I didn't. I was afraid to even go up to it. Then I sure, 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 sure. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, but I stayed so, here for a long time, and then I was flying reverse with the lights. Cool. Like, the first time, so my brain was reversed on the controls, and then yeah, Chase yeah. comes along and goes, "You have this all backwards." Sure, <laughs> sure. So. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to share? Yeah, I thought it was really constructive. It was like good to get off the simulators and actually sure and what did you think when you went from the simulator to the aircraft what it was similar but definitely like with the micro since it doesn't have the gyro it was uh, a little more difficult uh -huh. it became easier once you actually got the thing in the air but sure. it was like at first it like wouldn't want to come off the ground yeah yeah and there's reasons for that we're not gonna we don't need to go into all you know the, the science behind it but yeah essentially you you are, you're exactly right. But once you get it up off the ground, you're flying in essentially clean air. Think of these as just the same thing as like propellers on a boat, right? And you, and, and you want clean water for that to turn through or you get what's called cavitation. It's kind of similar effects, they, they call it ground effect. There's a bunch of different reasons why. Essentially, flying it real close to the ground, it's gonna be a different experience than once you get it up off the deck of it, whatever you're on, and get it in clean air, and it will fly a lot simpler and smoother. Um, and then mainly my question was going with regards to orientation. How did you guys do on that? Was that the confusing part? Yeah. Right? So meaning like the, the aircraft is symmetrical, so now it all of a sudden turns at a certain degree away from you. Yeah. Now what is your, your brain has to take a minute to figure out what to do. And that's, that's kind of what I came to talk a little bit about today. And then hopefully we'll, we'll fly here in just a couple minutes. So I'm going to try not to talk too much. Um, but essentially, if you guys, I think I alluded to it before, and if now that you've had a little bit of experience flying, like the number one thing, and I think all of these guys that have flown before will tell you the same thing. I mean, you can play around and you can go crazy, and I'm not saying that's not, you won't learn that way, but I think the best way, my, my personal experience, is to keep the back of the aircraft facing in line with you, all right? I put the little, so, you know, here you are with your transmitter, and here's your quad. So the star here is the back. Everybody, you know, we're so focused on thinking of the front of everything. That's like today's society with cars and boats and planes, it's all based upon the front. But in this particular uh, kind of arena, based upon my experience, I don't even pay attention to the front of the aircraft ever. I always pay attention to the back of the aircraft and where that is. Because that tells me that how I can control the uh, the, the quad or whatever it is. In the, in the fixed wings, it's a little bit different. We're mainly talking about the, the multi-rotors. So what I'm, I'm asking is when we get on these here in a little bit, is let's keep the back of the aircraft facing us. Um, and that is gonna make this so much simpler. So really, you have two sticks, right? Um, so on, on the transmitter, so tell me what the left stick does. I don't care, just yell them out. What does the left stick do? Throttle. Throttle, right? So, and the throttle essentially takes us up and down, right? And then what, it, what else does it do? <laughs> Turns, or what's another word for that? Rudder, yaw, yeah, okay, so we can, so this is the rudder, or the yaw, uh, I don't expect you to know that stuff, but yeah, you're right, so up, we're gonna go up, down, and then left, or right, right, so we'll just put turn. That one's on. That one's not on a spring? Yeah, that one's really tough. Like, the right kind is on a spring. Yes, yeah, it's good that you noticed that. Um, yeah, so the, the right gimbal, which is what, what, what does that one do? We'll do it again here. So what does up and down do on the right gimbal? Forward and backwards, right? I 
And then left and right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and, and you pointed it out that it's spring loaded. And that's how these all, they're all going to be that way for what we fly. So when you let go of it, it's going to center itself. But on this side, it doesn't do that for most of the units you're going to be flying. Um, there's various reasons for it. Uh, but there are units now that they do have a spring loaded center. And when we step up to stuff, and I'll let Stan talk about the Inspire since he's the one who brought it in today. Um, in all reality, what you guys are doing with this small stuff, I don't want you guys to get discouraged because when we step up to this big, bigger stuff, even though it's bigger and yeah, it costs more money when you crash it, it's actually, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually way, 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 way easier to fly for a, a ton of different reasons. One, because the aircraft itself is just, it's a better aircraft overall. And two, it has all these safety functions built into it to help you fly easier. So don't get discouraged on them. On, we want these little ones to be hard for you guys. It's going to be a challenge. It's a challenge for me to fly them as well. Um, it's, that's just the, the whole point of it. But if you can get your brain wrapped around those, then when you move up to this stuff, it's, you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Um, but we talked about, so what I want you guys to do is focus on this right here, this, this line. If the, for whatever reason this aircraft, it starts to turn one way or the other way, I want you to use this stick right here, the rudder, the yaw, to rotate it back so that it's in line with you, okay? For t the time being. So keep it in line with you. Um, and that's going to be your goal initially. Once you feel that you are confident that you can keep that aircraft in line with you, the next thing to do is, okay, start to start to maneuver the aircraft a little bit. And I'm sure you guys, I think you guys have probably already passed this point, but essentially what I like to try and do is do a box. So we're keeping the aircraft, we're keeping the aircraft tail towards us. We're gonna go, again, we're here. We're gonna fly out, right, down, and back. Then you're gonna do that, you know, however many times you wanna do that. Now go out, left, down, and back, okay? Do that same thing over and over again. If you want to reverse it, go this way and, and keep doing that and reverse it. If you want to make it all one move, now just do it all as one. Don't stop and think or land and make this a big figure eight. All right, and do that. Once you have that under control, all right, you guys feel confident that you can do that, then we can start to do some other stuff where we, we orient the aircraft differently. That's the most basic setup. And if you can accomplish that, I mean, you're going to, it takes time on these small units, but you're going to be good. And what I recommend you do for the first time is pick a starting place and take it off, hover it, go out, do a box, come back, land it. Take it off, do it, do that it, as long as you need, and figure that out. If you crash or whatever, that's what they're there for, these little units, and we'll keep going through that. If for some reason you guys are really speeding along, this is really easy for you, let me know. I can make it. I can make it a lot more difficult really quickly. Um, there's a million different ways to 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 make this. This is all about your brain working. Uh, I think I've said it before. It's like trying to learn to ride a bike, but a lot harder, in my opinion. And, uh, <laughs> and then, but once you figure it out, your brain starts to go, oh, okay, now I know how to ride the bike, and it, it's pretty easy. Um, but it just takes time and repetition. Um, I don't know if any of these guys who've flown quite a bit have anything else. That's that's basic right now. We'll go into some other stuff. And, and the other thing is, is uh, last thing, and I'll, I'll ask you guys. But on the Hubson uh, Chase, I, I don't, I haven't flown them in a while since last year. But does it self level or not? Okay, so it does. Okay, cool. So I want everybody to fly with the self leveling feature on for right now. And what that what that means, I think you guys are all aware. But when you let go of this right stick. The aircraft is going to self-level. It may still have a, inertia from whatever movement you were doing, and when you let go, it still may run into whatever you didn't want it to run into. But it's not going to just flip over. Um, we can we can turn those features off, and yeah, we're going to have quads stuck in every place in this building because when you fly in manual mode, it's really really hard. And we'll get you you'll get to experience that at a later date. But for right now, make sure we keep them all in the in the stabilized mode. And then if you guys had any any brief um, stuff? Yes, Dan, go ahead. Well, I, I mean, like Todd's pointed out, uh, oh, even with the larger ones, um, unless you're, you're racing these things, having the orientation with the, with the tail um, facing you is always best because 
what happens is the remote control becomes intuitive. You don't have to look at it. So, but if, if your quad is oriented wrong and your intuition tells you, hey, I, I need to get to the right, but it's actually flipped around and you don't realize it, you're going to end up going left by you know, flipping it right. So I found that the controls are just very intuitive. You don't have to look at them. And as long as you've kept that quad facing away from you, then eventually, yes, you, you learn when you see the lights or however you're uh, orienting your, uh, your craft, then you can learn to, uh, to make that adjustment in your brain. But it takes some time because the first thing you want to do is when you want it to go right, you're going to flip that thing right. Sure. And, uh, and if it's not oriented, it's going to go in a different direction. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. You guys have anything else to say? Oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, and if you do get in a, a problem, take your finger off, if it's self-leveling, yeah, right. don't panic, take your finger <laughs> off the stick and kind of figure out what's going on because you can fly away. Sometimes you lose perspective of the direction it's going and you can fly away from yourself. So uh, take your finger off the stick and catch your breath and see slowly what direction it's going. Sure. And then, yeah, do you guys have anything back there? Yeah, well, because he's already gone through my formal classroom training. Sure, sure. Um, we're teaching the IOC functions on the, G, on the DGI NASA. Sure. So I said the same thing, just if you get misoriented, you panic, just let go, it'll hover. Worst case scenario, flip the IOC and the home lock will stick back and apply will fly directly sure. backwards. Sure, yeah. So he's talking about some more advanced features that we'll get into a little bit later. I think, um, I don't know if, we'll, we'll, let's maybe fly right now and then um, after, or do you want to go through the if more advanced features on the Fana or on the Spire and let them see that or? Uh, Either way, I mean, so if we fly, um, we could we could fly for a little bit, but maybe we should maybe we go through. This is where we already have everything set up. Maybe okay. we can just go through some stuff here. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. So maybe you guys should. Well, Has everybody seen the Inspire yet? So I mean, we've not that. introduced. Well, we've shown these guys the Inspire, but we've not talked about setup or anything. So they haven't they haven't seen this unit yet. So maybe you guys can come up here and get a better perspective.